guys would like us to do is to, I'm going to split you into groups, so two groups of three, and I'm going to give you one of these sheets, and, and for the first part, I'd like you to go down through these elements here, so we've got a house, a person, a pond, this is a vegetable plot, compost heap, that's my attempt at a chicken, and, <laughs> and that's an orchard. So I'd just like you to, in your groups, just try and think of about three things that come out, or outputs, or products that come from each of these elements. So I'm going to give you that sheet there. Okay, so if you've got um, two or three things down for each um, each of your elements, let's flip the paper over and look at the other side. So we've got the whole, all the same things, and now I would like you to now think about what do they need, what are the inputs. So for your orchard, what kind of things does it need to help it to be a healthy orchard and productive? What does the chicken need? Um, what goes into your compost bin? So for each of our elements, we've got a short list of outputs and a short list of in inputs that it requires. So I'd now like you to see if you can match up any of your outputs to your inputs. So, um, for example, where we've got the vegetable patch, it needs water. Is, can we get water from anywhere else? Yeah. So is water an output? Is there anywhere? Is there anywhere on this list that you could get water? Well, runoff, but it's like that's sort of water. Okay, so we've got. Um, we're starting to build up quite a few connections here. So, what what impressions have we got? What do we think about that exercise and how how this we've built up this um, web of connections? Nothing is isolated and everything is connected. Nothing's isolated and everything's connected. Yeah, sure. Okay, so so by placing the elements um, carefully. Um, I can reduce the amount of work that's required to move, for instance, uh, compost to the vegetable plot if they're quite close to each other. Um, and also, if the compost heap isn't too far from the kitchen, so when I'm taking my waste scraps, it's nice and close. Um, if my compost heap's right down at the very far end of the garden, and then the veg plot is halfway back, then every time I'm composting, I'm wasting energy walking up and down the garden. So some of these elements um, are producing several products. So why is, why is that beneficial? <laughs> is it just a simple efficiency if, more, if one thing is doing more, more functions? Sure, yeah. So if you've got waste product and it's transforming it into a useful product, um, it's kind of recycling that, those, uh, that matter and those nutrients. Um, but what would happen if um, some catastrophe befell our compost heap? Um, what happens then? There is, I mean, you could still, you could, you could pick some, you could use, reuse a couple other things in the time that you're rebuilding your compost. So you could maybe use the chicken manure 
where you could use some of the sludge from the pond or something. So you have a few things that have a similar function and you can lean on those while you rebuild your compost function. Perfect. Yep, perfect. Um, so, yeah, so I'd use this activity. Um, I sometimes use it as the very first um, activity on a, an introduction course. Um, sometimes even before I've introduced the ethics, I'll use this just as a way to get people um, switching from that thinking about the way we, a lot of us traditionally think in kind of linear reductionist way to suddenly just seeing all these links and because I think it brings out so much um, so many principles and um, ideas in permaculture in a kind of systems way in a very non-threatening way everyone can relate to a house and a person and a pond and a chicken you know these these are very grounded concepts um,